So welcome back uh, to the new lectures. So in the la previous lecture, we saw kernels for several problems like uh, point line cover, right? It had k squared points, okay? For vertex cover, we saw a kernel with order k square vertices and edges. For d heating set, we saw kernel with k power d sets and uh, elements. Similarly, for set packing and for the edge click cover, we saw kernel for 2 power k. So today, we will see some more techniques uh, largely rooted in graph structure theory and how that is employed uh, to design kernels for, uh, yeah, so how that is employed to design kernels for the problems of our interest. Okay, so the plan is to cover what is called, I will teach you what is called crown decomposition, which is literally rooted in matching theory and give you another application in MaxSat and then Niemhauser Trotter and expansion lemma. So this part of the lecture should be considered as uh, kernelization which comes from uh, structure theory like graph structure theory okay you will see what I mean by that and uh, uh, more, this will be covered in two lectures of 35 40 minutes each uh, hopefully or maybe in one we'll see as we go forward okay uh, so this is a classical theorem from 1916 by Koenig who said that in a bipartite graph the number of vertices in a minimum vertex cover is equal to the number of edges in a maximum matching and using an algorithm for maximum matching and goes back to Hofkraft and Kamm from 1972 order m root n time algorithm okay. So, uh, so basically if you are given a bipartite graph with m edges m edges n vertices okay in order m root n time, we can check whether there exists a vertex, we can find a minimum vertex cover of a bipartite graph in polynomial time. And another property of this vertex cover is that, in fact, notice that up until now we have been using the size of the maximum matching as a lower bound for the vertex cover. In bipartite graphs, actually it happens with equality. So, in fact, the size of the minimum vertex cover is equal to the maximum matching. So, in some sense, Packing is equal to covering. So, vertex cover should could be thought of as a covering problem. It means you want to cover all the like you want to cover all the edges with the vertices. And packing is like packing of disjoint edges, pairwise disjoint edges. And in fact, this property holds not only for a bipartite graph. There's another graph called Koenig graph uh, or Koenig Egervary graph, which basically the definition is a family of graphs where the size of the maximum matching is equal to minimum vertex cover. And uh, yeah, and even those. And in this family of graph, you can find minimum vertex cover in polynomial time. But I'm not going to prove uh, Koenig's theorem. It's a very classical theorem you can find in any graph theory book of your interest. Uh, in particular, Distel's graph theory book you can find or Douglas West graph theory book you can find. Okay. Uh, but for us, what is important is that in a bipartite graph, the number of vertices in a minimum vertex cover is equal to the number of edges in a maximum matching. And there is a Hall's Maris theorem. This is also a very classical theorem. What does is, what is Hall's theorem say? Let G be a bipartite graph. So, just to uh, help you a little bit uh, with, let us add a piece. So, basically it says that if you look at a bipartite graph with bipartition A and B, with bipartition A and B, and then there is a matching that saturates a meaning there is a matching that selects there is no vertex in A that is not part of this matching if and only if for every x subset of A for every x subset of A look at the look at this condition right this is a necessary condition that if there is a matching that saturates every vertex of A then if you look at some set x look at the number of neighbors in the side B that number of neighbors must be at least size of x because otherwise how will you match the vertices of x okay so this is a necessary condition and hall said that this is also a sufficient condition so this is what he proved g has a matching of a into b if and only if for all sets x of a number of neighbors that it has in side of b that is n of x is at least as big as side of a and again, using the matching algorithm of Hofcroft and Karp, we can do the following. Either we can find a matching that 
saturates A or we can find an inclusion minimal set X. So what we can find? An inclusion minimal. So it will say, hey, here you're matching the saturates X or it will give me a set X with the property that the number of neighbors in Y, in B, like such that the neighborhood of X is strictly less than X. Okay? And what is another property? This is inclusion minimal. Such set. Meaning, for all X in X, or rather, uh, inclusion minimal sets, I think the, the best definition should be, for all X prime, which is a proper subset of X, neighborhood of X prime is greater than or equal to X prime. So, if I look at any other small subset, a small subset here and look at their neighborhood in B, okay, then that is as greater than or equal to its size. So, this is a minimal set in the sense that if I look at any proper subset, it satisfies the Hall's condition, but if I take the whole set, it does not satisfy the Hall's condition. So, this is called inclusion minimal witness that uh, it is it does not have a matching. So, first of all, okay, so what does it tell us? This algorithm tells us that uh, by using this algorithm of half crept curve in polynomial time, we can either say that look at the matching that saturates A or we can find a subset that violates the Hall's condition. That is, hey, look at this set, it has a strictly smaller neighborhood in B and so you should not be able to find a matching that saturates A, right? Okay, so this is what you can do, uh, do uh, using in polynomial time. So, based on these two theorems, uh, the crown decomposition will be made. Okay. So, what is the crown decomposition? So, I hope, so let us just, uh, let us just, uh, let us just, right. So, first what did we saw? We saw that uh, in bipartite graph, minimum vertex cover is equal to max matching. Second, Hall's theorem. What was Hall's theorem? It says that if you have a bipartition A and B, matching, saturating A, if and only if for all X subset of F, neighborhood of X should be at least greater than or equal to X. Okay? So, these are the two classical theorem that we are going to use and going to show what is called crown decomposition. The crown decomposition is an interesting object. So, what is a crown decomposition? So, crown decomposition is a partition of vertex set of graph into three parts C crown H head and B the remaining body. So, you can think of this as a like crown being placed on the royal king. Okay. What is the property of this? C is an independent set. What is the property? That C is an independent set. So, it is a partition of vertex set into three parts C, H and B. C forms an independent set. There is no edge between C and B. So, you can think of this if I delete H there is no edge between C and B. So, H acts as a separator. It separates C from B. And more importantly also, there is a matching that saturates H into C. Okay. So, so what does it say? Okay. I have a head. I have a crown. No edge here. In fact, there is a matching that saturates head and there is a rest of the body which separated. So, look at the our like just look at our body, right? This is a head, this is our head, this is our neck, right? Uh, like head, crown, and this is the rest of the body. So, if I delete this head, then crown and the rest of the body can be separated. So, think of that, that this head acts as a separator between crown and the rest of the body. Okay? And given that crown decomposition exists, what can we say about as a reduction rule? So, it provides a very beautiful reduction rule for vertex cover. So, the reduction rule is that if we can find such a separation, then you delete H from the graph. Okay. So, if you delete H from the graph, then what happens? C becomes isolated vertex. There becomes degree 0 vertex because there is no edge among them. And so, there are all the edges incident to C is goes. So, if I put H 
I decide to put H in the vertex cover, then I can C becomes isolated. So I could delete H union C and reduce my problem to this. Uh, okay. So let's see why this reduction rule is correct. I mean, this is not very hard to show, but like, okay. So this is our crown rule for vertex cover. So what did we do? We have G comma K and I want to show that G minus H union C comma K minus H is a instance. Is a. So let us try to understand. So one direction is obvious, right? Why? So this direction is obvious. If G prime G minus H union C has a vertex cover of size k minus mod h, then what will I do? Okay, fine. So, if you recall correctly, how was, how was it? So, here is our head, here is our crown and here is our b. Now, uh, you have gave me a vertex cover of b of size k minus mod h. What I am going to say? Add h, add h. So, so suppose, so, so, if you gave me a vertex cover say uh, x, if you gave me a vertex cover x for g prime, I claim that x union h is a vertex cover of g and of course, the size of x union h is at most k because I just added h vertices. Why? Let us see. All the edges which are here is taken care by x. Now, look at every other edge. Every other, there is no edge here. So, every other edge could be here, could be here or could be present here. Now, so in fact, for the remaining edges which are not present in B, H forms a vertex cover. So, if you have taken care of all the edges in B by X, then by adding H, you can take care of all the edges in the graph itself. Okay. What about the forward direction? This is more interesting direction. Okay. But this is also not very, this is where we will use the fact that here is our C, here is our H and here is our B. Uh, okay. So, let us suppose there is a matching that saturates this. We know this. Okay. Now, notice that any vertex cover, any C is a vertex cover of G. What is the property of C? Look, this is a matching. It means every vertex cover must pick at least one vertex of the matching edges. So, if it picked up all these edges, all these vertices, then we are very happy because then I know there is a vertex cover that contains whole of head. So, that is great. It is done. But what could happen is that it could be that your vertex cover picks up some. It is like this. Then my transformation is going to be, sorry, x, this is my vertex cover x. So, I am going to transform like this. I am going to say, look, from x, delete the vertices of s, add all the vertices of h. Okay? Look, what I did from x. So, notice that x definitely contains now, for every vertex here, I have added this vertex. That is all that I have done. So, what I have done? I have made a new x prime, which is from x, I have deleted all the vertices in C okay? and I have added all the vertex in H. Now, what is the size of this? Well, everything, why did you, everything that you have, it could be, so it could be that, uh, it could, so everything that you have, so every time you delete something, Okay, you, you delete something from C, you have added exactly one vertex here. Right? You might say that, well, maybe this vertex is already there, but then you are adding nothing to it. Right? So, you can show that even the size of x prime is less than equal to k, but what is the property of this? It is a vertex cover that contains all of head. So, because of the property that you have a matching saturating edge, you, you, you are assured that locally every vertex cover must pick at least one vertex of this matching edges. You use this fact 
to move the vertices from C to vertices in H to get another vertex cover of size K, uh, right, X prime that contains all of head. Now, once you have this, you can say that look clearly X prime minus H is a vertex cover of P because who will cover these edges? This co cannot be covered by head, right? It can only be covered by this and hence the size is at most K minus H. You might say that, oh, maybe, but look, be, be, this is where we also use the fact that there is a matching saturating edge, which implies that any vertex cover X must contain H vertices, cardinal T H vertices from C union H. So, actually when you do delete the vertices from C union H, you are decreasing the parameter by cardinal T H. So, if you work around, tickle around with it, you will be able to get it. Okay. Okay, so I hope, so the reduction rule is clear, the matching needs to be covered and we can assume that it is covered by H because it makes no sense to use vertices of C. Okay, okay, and this is a formal proof that I tried to give you. Okay, now so what is my crown reduction rule? So if I can find a crown, then I have a reduction rule, but how do I find a crown? In a, so in the next step, I am going to give you a lemma which going to... Uh, show how to find. So, my key lemma is going to be following. I am going to give you given a graph G without isolated vertex and integer K in polynomial time we can either find a matching of size K plus 1. Okay? If I find a matching of size K plus 1 then there is no solution. There is no solution of size at most K. Done. Or I can find a crown decomposition in which case you can reduce the size or conclude the graph as at most 3K vertices. Right? So, Either I will say, look, this has no vertex cover of size at most k, or I will find a place to apply a reduction rule, which is a crown decomposition, delete head, get a smaller graph, reduce the parameter by some amount. If I cannot do, if I cannot assert it has no solution, I cannot apply reduction rule, then I will say that then the, then the graph has very small number of vertices, it has at most 3k vertices, and then that is your kernel. So, if you have applied this sequence of operation and you have ended up into a graph with at most 3k vertices, then this is polynomial kernel. Notice what is the difference between this kernel and the kernel for vertex cover that we have seen before. Before, the size of the vertex cover kernel was like k square. Now, what we are able to get is a kernel with order k vertices, just 3k vertices. Okay, that is a basic difference. Okay, the proof is very simple. Uh, okay, so this is a proof of key lemma. Okay, so the proof of key lemma is that if we find a greedily maximal matching, okay. So, we find a greedy maximal matching in graph G. So, we find matching. If it has size at least k plus 1, what happens? Then you say no. So, that is your find a matching of size k plus 1, uh, right. If we are not able to do it, we will find. So, there is no maximal matching of size k plus 1. Uh, which implies that, uh, uh, <clears throat> okay. So, I will find a greedy maximum matching. If its size is at least k plus 1, we are done. So, what is the outside of a, so we know that if I do not include any, like if I look at the vertices of maximal matching and look at outside, what is that? That forms an independent set, right. So, let me draw a picture for you. Okay, so what has happened? So my first step was that okay, let's find, let's find this, uh, let's find this maximal matching, right? And this is my i. Okay, this is my i. Why? Because what is the size of this m? Right? We know that the maximal matching size is at most k. Otherwise, we would have said no. Then the total number of vertices involved in this matching is bounded by so now we will look at okay okay so let's uh, we have called it this vertex set at x so let's call that x so this is x and this is an independent set so this is our first step so now let's just focus on x which is the endpoints of my matching edges so this is an endpoints of my maximal edges and the vertices which is outside this set okay now what i do is that now i think of this graph, I forget, so this is my x, forget edges 
in graph induced on x. So let's, for now, I said, okay, this is my x. I don't have any edges here. I have an i here. So what is this graph induced on x union i now? It's a bipartite graph. Why? Because there is no edges in x. There is no edges in i. So every edge is going between a vertex in x and vertex in i. Okay. So now what I'm going to do between x and i, I'm going to find a matching, maximum matching slash minimum vertex covered in y per type graph between x and i. So now I'm going to find a maximum matching between x and i. Notice that if this also maximum matching has size k plus 1, okay, then what can you say? If this maximum matching also has size at least k plus 1, then you can say, hey, look, there's a small portion of my graph, there I can find a maximum matching of size k plus 1 or more, then this is not a solution. So let's assume that the maximum matching had size upper bounded by k. Now, uh, what do you know about this? So this is a matching and you have found minimum vertex cover. Now you know that every minimum vertex cover must pick one end point of every edge, so in particular of this matching edge. But by Koenig's theorem, I know that in bipartite graph, minimum vertex cover is equal to maximum matching. So the property is that uh, minimum vertex cover contains exactly one vertex from this matching edge that we have found. So suppose this is the vertex cover, right? So this is my matching, these red colored edges are my matching edges and this bulbs are my, uh, bulbs are my uh, vertex cover edges. So if minimum vertex cover contains at least one vertex of x, then I will find you a crown decomposition. What is my crown decomposition? You look at the intersection of x, intersection of uh, vertex, minimum vertex cover, okay, into x, call that a head, okay. Look at their matching endpoints, call just those two guys an endpoint and remaining as the rest of the body. So now let's understand. So look, by definition, this is my head and there is an edge and you know that the, the endpoints of H are into I, right? So definitely the, there is no edge, there is no edge among the vertices in C and, but the only thing which I have to make sure that there is no edge between C and the remaining, okay? But look at, suppose there is an edge between C and a vertex in X, right? Because this is my whole vertex set, right? My whole vertex set is like some, my body is going to be some, my body is going to be, uh, my body is going to be some part of C and some part of H. So definitely a vertex in the crown does not have an edge here because this is whole is independent set. But what about an edge here? But if there is an edge here, who is going to cover this vertex? Who is going to cover this edge? In this bipartite graph, the only edges which can be like, the red colored guys form a vertex cover. So now, these are the vertices which are not selected in the vertex cover. This is a vertex, this is a vertices which are not selected in the vertex cover, which implies that there is no edge between this and this vertex, which implies that we can indeed get a decomposition into crown, head and the rest of the body. So this is great. Okay. So the last case I found, so I found this maximum matching and I find this minimum vertex cover, but there is no vertex inside X. If there is no vertex inside x, then every minimum vertex cover is here. What is our assumption? Our assumption is graph does not contain any isolated vertex. There is no degree zero vertex, which implies that all these vertices are like, look at any vertex in independent set. They are incident to some edge going to x, which implies that my minimum vertex cover must contain every vertex in i, right? But the maximum matching was size k. So you have picked up some k vertex from i. So now what is the size? The minimum vertex cover contains only vertices of i. Hence it contains all vertices of i. So the size of i is bounded by k plus 1 at strictly less than k plus 1. And we have that. So what is the size of my whole graph? Size of x which is bounded by 2k and size of i which is now we have bounded by I, k. So total number of vertex in this graph is upper bounded by 3k. Okay. I hope uh, that kinds of clear set. Okay, so we have done with the crown reduction. Okay, so we have proved with the crown reduction. Okay, so what we have shown is a vertex cover admits a kernel with three k vertices. Okay, by the way, this 
does not say anything about size of the kernel. Okay, number of edges could be still order k square, right? So, hence the size which is number of vertices plus number of edges and bits to represent them could still be order k square. All we are able to do with this new kernel is to reduce the size of my graph to order k square uh, so order k vertices in particular 3k vertices okay 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 so let's see another application of uh, this nice kernel okay so the next problem which i or nice crown reduction rule so i'm going to talk about slightly uh, up until now we have been talking about a uh, graph problem for now i will talk about a satisfiability problem a slightly different problem so we are given a max sat which is a CNA formula phi and integer k. So, what is CNA formula? Let me, I am not sure if you are aware or maybe you are aware, but like let me just. So, what is CNA formula? CNA formula of C is like m clauses where each CI is like some x i or x j or x k bar. So, it is like some literals. So, we have n variables x 1, x 2, x n okay? and what are we looking for? Does there exist an assignment x i to 0 1 such that each of the clause is satisfied, each clause because this is and and this is or. So, CNF means ands of ors. Okay? Okay. And when a, when a clause is satisfiable, so if you set x i equal to 0, 1, 1, if a clause evaluates to 1, then it is 1. So, for example, if I put x k equal to 0, then x k bar is 1. So, it does not matter what other variables are satisfied because or even one of this variable gets 1, this clause gets satisfied. And we are looking for a finding an assignment so that each clause is satisfiable. Okay? Uh, okay. Such that each clause is satisfiable. Okay. But uh, we are not like, but not all formula may be satisfiable. So, we are asking is there a clause, is there an assignment which satisfies at least k clauses. Okay? So, our problem is uh, uh, CNA formula phi and integer k can we find an assignment satisfying at least k clauses and what we will show that max sat admits a kernel with k variables and 2k clauses. Okay. So, 2k clauses is very easy. Okay. If phi has more than 2k clauses, we are done. Why? You start with an arbitrary assignment. Start with an arbitrary assignment, any assignment. So, you let us say, okay, that is not two. What I mean by ar arbitrary assignment? So, okay, I do x1, x2, xn. I substitute everybody one. Okay. What happens? Uh, okay. What happens is that, okay, if this satisfies at least m by 2 clauses done. Otherwise, what I will do? Okay, let us complement this. It means x 1, x 2, 0, 0, everyone is 0. Right? So, every clause which was unsatisfied before because right now will be satisfied because we have complemented this. So, either this has at least m by 2 clauses or at least this satisfies m by 2 clauses. Right? So, if the number of if the if, uh, if you have more than two clauses, then you know that in polynomial time that, hey, I mean, there is an assignment that will satisfy and we can find this assignment in polynomial time. So, this is an yes instance. So, for now, let us assume that the number of clauses is upper bounded by 2k. Okay? And if phi also has at most k variables, then we are done. So, let us assume that we are in the case when we have at most 2k clauses 
and the number of variables are more than k. So then let's see what happens. Now in this case, we are going to make a following uh, graph, bipartite graph. So one side of my bipartite graph are variables, other side is a vertex for, so there's a vertex for each variable, in y there's a vertex for each clauses and I put an edge between a variable clause, variable clause edge if variable or its negation appear in clause. Right? So, suppose I have a variable x i and there is a clause c j. So, if it appears x i then I put an edge or I, if x i or it appears x i bar something even then I put an edge. Okay? So, this is what might happen. Now, I would like to apply okay, if So, now I look at x and look at y. Uh, so, if there is a matching, then what happens? Okay. If there is a matching that saturates x, let us see that is a, okay. uh, so I look at this x and y and I ask myself what happens if there is a, okay. let us ask ourselves what happens there is a x. and this is y okay and there is a matching that saturates x okay uh, let's use some other color there's a matching m that saturates x what is the size of matching it's strictly greater than k otherwise we are done now let's look at these clauses okay for each variable x1 let's suppose this is xq each x i, x 1, let us call the clauses with c 1, x 2 is associated to c 2, x q is associated to c q. Okay. Now, I ask myself, okay, uh, look at x 1, how does x 1 appear in c 1? Suppose x 1 appears as x 1 bar, then I am going to, appear, okay, fine, then let us assign x 1 equal to 0. Oh, I look at x 2 in c 2. Uh, okay, x2 appears in C2 as x2. Oh, then let's assign x2 equal to one, so on and so forth. Xq has been assigned zero because maybe it appears as xq bar. Now notice what happened. Is clause one satisfied? Yes. Now I have given x1 to xq. These I have come up with an assignment, and let's look at C1. Is C1 satisfied? Yes, because x1 bar x1 is 0, so x1 bar is 1 and I do not rest of the variables whatever assignment you give does not matter. So, c1 is satisfied. Similarly, c2 is satisfied. C so, we can satisfy all q clauses at least, right? I do not know what there could be, the number of clauses is around 2k, but I know that I have found an assignment which is able to satisfy q clauses, but q is more than k. So, we are done. Okay. Okay. So, this is how you, if, you, so basically what happens is that for every clause you have assigned a variable. Say, look, your job is to satisfy this. Do not care about other clauses. Okay. Other, there is like you do not care about. So, I have been able to find for each variable one clause each, like that they all take care of themselves and rest, there may be more clauses which can be satisfied, but that is perfectly fine. So, if we have a matching that saturates my x, then I do have a I do have an assignment that satisfies at least k clauses. And now what I will show to you is that if this is not a case, then we can apply a reduction rule. Okay. If there is no matching of x into y, we find a minimal c into x such that cardinality of c is uh, like this is a violating set, right? Where h is n of c, where cardinality of c is larger than the neighborhood, right? Remember, we talked about that in a bipartite graph, there is a matching, otherwise there is a set, minimal set, which violates the Hall's condition. Okay. Now, what is the definition of C? You know that for every subset of C, there is a matching that saturates, the, there is a ma the, the, for every subset of C, the neighborhood of that C prime is e greater or equal to C, which implies 
for any x and c, there is a matching of c minus x into. So you delete a vertex x. Now for every subset, you know their neighborhood. So there is a there is a set which saturates c, but because of the size constraint, right? Because of the size constraint, uh, that matching must be saturating edge. Okay. So since c is kernelty of c is greater than or equal to h, we have that a matching of c minus x into h is also the is also the matching of h into c. So this automatically gives us a kind of a crown reduction. Why? Look at the variables here, right? This is my crown, right? This is my rest of the, this is my head. And by definition, the neighborhood of C is exactly equal to this. So there is no edge here. There is no edge here. So we automatically get a crown decomposition with C, H and the rest here. So, okay. So what is our reduction rule? Our reduction rule is very simple. Remove H from, remove uh, the head means the clauses which appears here from psi and decrease k by cardinality of h. That is, you have decreased psi minus h and k minus h is a new instance. Now, the question is why is this correct? Okay, so I will show you why this is correct. Uh, as before, this is not something uh, amazingly ter terribly difficult, but like let's see why it is easy. Okay, so why it is easy? So, what we have done, okay. Uh, okay, so again the reverse direction is much more easier. So what happens? If notice that these variables only appears in these clauses, right? So these variables are local to these clauses because they do not see anybody else. That's a property. So these are like this head separates these variables from other clauses. Fine. So suppose there is a phi prime, which is like phi minus h. Suppose there is a assignment alpha satisfying uh, k minus h clauses in phi prime. Now what I will do, I will say, okay, fine. Let's come to my crown. Let's come to my head. I know there exists a matching that saturates h. Okay. And I know that this clause is this like uh, did I see okay this crown this crown variables do not appear anywhere in do not appear in any clause of phi prime and now we have this matching I said okay for this clause take the variable and assign it accordingly. Take this clause, there is a local variable, a private variable, assign it accordingly, the way we did when we had a matching. And by doing this local assignment of every vertex, so now fix this assignment, let's call it alpha c. So now alpha plus alpha c gives you some alpha tilde, an assignment of phi comma k that satisfies at least k clauses. Okay. That's great. The reverse direction is even more easier, right? Reverse direction is that, okay, fine. Look, look at an assignment that satisfies, uh, look at an assignment that satisfies at least k clauses. Okay. And uh, you know that, look at, look at an assignment uh, that satisfies at least k clauses in phi. Look at alpha minus variables in phi. Okay, let's call it alpha tilde. So alpha tilde is a valid assignment of clauses in uh, phi prime. Okay. Alpha tilde is a valid assignment of clauses in the phi prime. So now ask yourself how many clauses 
does alpha tilde satisfy? Alpha tilde definitely satisfies at least k minus mod h clauses because the only clauses which alpha tilde will not satisfy are the ones which appear here, right? Because rest of the clauses do not have these variables and those must be uh, satisfied with the variables from outside, which it is fine. So, we have shown that phi prime k minus h is a yes instance. Okay. So, you see using combinatorics and using arguments from matching theory, we are able to come up with kernel for a problem which is much more complex and complicated uh, or interesting and the property which we use is that I have been able to find a local solution which is opt in the sense and we can modify that solution so that a local solution can be extended to an optimum solution for the whole problem and that is what we have exploited in all this reduction. Oh, look at a solution of optimum, look at how the locally looks like. Oh, if they look like locally, I can transform into another solution that locally look like the way we wish to look like. Okay? And then we argue this. So, in some sense, there is a good local solution which can be extended to an optimum solution and we will take this idea forward in the next lecture and that will be the last lecture on the topic of kernelization. Thank you.